Welcome back everyone. Hope you guys are having a great day as always. Today we're gonna to be talking about minimum spending trees and algorithms that are used with it. So Criscoll's algorithm and Prim's algorithm. So what you need to know for today's lesson is undirected graphs and the formula for graphs. So G equals VE, where G is the graph, V is the vertices or the nodes, and then E is the edges. I have a quick example here so that you can see. So this is the edge itself, this is the edge itself, and they're gonna be weighted edges. So this might have a weight of two, this might have a weight of three, it'll depend. These are gonna be your nodes or your vertices, and then this entire thing is your graph. That's how we get the form G equals V E. So what I'll be covering today is what exactly is a minimum spanning tree, uh, Criscoll's algorithm and Prim's algorithm. A minimum spanning tree is a subset of a graph that connects all the nodes with no cycles and the minimum total edge weight. So I'll show you with an example here. A tree itself is just a graph with no cycles. So let's say if I remove this, this in itself is a tree right here. Is it a minimum spanning tree? No, because if you see the total sum of the edges is gonna be five plus seven, which is 12. If we were erased five instead to get rid of that circle, we're left with six and seven, which is even worse. It's six plus seven is gonna be 13. Finally, if we get rid of the biggest weight here, which is seven, it's gonna be five and six, right? And now we're, gonna, we're not gonna have any more circles and it's gonna be the minimum weight. So it's gonna be five plus six, which is 11. So overall, this is a tree that connects all the nodes and has a minimum total edge weight. That's what makes it an MST. One important note is that we can have multiple MSTs for the same graph because we can make multiple trees that add up to the same weight. For example, if we remove this one, we're going to be left with an edge weight of one plus two plus one, which is going to be four. We can also make one by getting rid of this and we'll also still have the same MST that adds up to four. Here's another example right here. You can actually see three different cycles here. So we have one like this. We have another cycle like this. And then we have one like that as well. Now to make the tree, we can start off by getting rid of the biggest value, which is nine. So I'll get rid of that for now. And then just like that, we got rid of one cycle. Uh, we still do have a cycle right here. And for that, I'm gonna get rid of the biggest edge, which is seven. So I'm gonna get rid of that. And just like that, we have our minimum spanning tree. But sometimes it's not as easy as just getting rid of the biggest edge. For example, what about this scenario? How are you gonna get rid of every single edge? Because what if an edge is the only way to get to one path? For example, let's say the biggest weights were at this eight right here. So I just made the weights bigger by adding 30 to them, but you can see that now they have the biggest weights here. So if I got rid of those weights, all of a sudden we can't reach eight with any node which kind of breaks the definition of the entire MST thing. So we have to think of a better way to come up with an MST with this. One way is brute force. We try every single possibility out, but there is a better way. That's where Prim's and Criscoll's algorithm comes into place. So we'll start off with Criscoll's algorithm because it's very simple. All you have to do is sort the weights in ascending order. Once you sort these edges, what you're going to do is you're going to add them one by one, as long as they're not making any cycles. For example, I shrunk these two weights right here just to show how it would look like. So for demonstration, first we would add 0.4, then we would add 0.5, and then we wouldn't be able to add one because that would cause a cycle. So we would move on to the next biggest weight. So you might be wondering, how does the computer know whether there's a cycle or not? It's very simple actually. What we do here is we're gonna make 10 sets, one for each vertices. It doesn't have to be 10, it's just 10 in this case because we have 10 vertices but you would make as many sets as there are vertices. So that means that there is one vertex for each set. I highlighted the sets here. So blue denotes a set. So that way we have 10 sets over here. We're only gonna be adding edges that connect two different sets. So for example, let's say we connect eight and nine, just like that. That's gonna be one set now. Now let's say we add seven and eight. Seven, eight, nine are all in the same set. So we can't connect these because it connects a set to itself, which doesn't work. So Criscoll's algorithm allows this by just doing sets and unions. So I have the edges sorted right here. So first we have eight and nine, then we have three and four, one and three, two, four, nine, 10, and one, four. And we're gonna be adding them one by one as long as they don't make a cycle, which, we, which means we're not adding an edge where both nodes belong to the same set. So let's start off with eight and nine. Eight and nine is right here. We connect that because that has a weight of one, which is the smallest here. Now let's move on to three and four. Three and four are two separate sets, so we can union them just like that. Next, we have one and three. One and three are also separate sets, so we can union them just like that. 
Next we have two and four. Two and four are also separate sets, so we can union them just like that. Now we have nine and 10. Nine and 10 are separate sets, so we just union them just like that. Finally, we have one and four. So you can see that one and four are part of the same set. So we're gonna skip that one and we're gonna move on to the next one. The next model's edge is over here with seven and eight and seven and eight belong to two separate sets. So we're gonna union them just like before. Next model's edge is gonna be seven, five right here because they're part of two separate sets. So we're going to union them. Next up, we have three and five, which are part of two separate sets. So we're going to union them right there. Our next biggest weight is going to be five and six right here, which are all two separate sets. So we're going to union them. And just like that, we've connected all the nodes without having any cycles. So once we get rid of those edges, we're left with a tree that has a minimum total edge weight. And that's how you make a minimum spanning tree with Crystal's algorithm. Now we're going to do Prim's algorithm. Prim's algorithm is a little bit different because we're not going to be looking at our edges as much anymore. We're going to be starting from one arbitrary vertex and we're going to be growing across the graph. So what happens is we choose a random star vertex as our initial MST. Then while there are vertices that are not in this MST, we're going to be finding edges that connect the MST to outside vertices and then take the minimum edge and add that to the MST. So for our case, let's start off with two and make our way from left to right. So we start off with two and two is our MST now. And we look at all the edges connecting the MST to the outside edges. So right now we have this, we have this, and we have that. So those are direct connections to that MST. And the smallest one you'll see is three because other ones are six and nine, which are a lot bigger. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add four. Now our MST has grown by one and we have a couple more edges to look at. Apart from this and this, we now have the fours connections, which is this, 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 and this. We're gonna be taking the minimum one that connects the MSC to those outside vertices. So you'll see that two is gonna be the smallest edge right here. So connecting three and four is gonna be our next move. So just like that, I've added that to the MSC and now we've grown the number of edges that we have to check. So we have nine and eight, as well as four, nine, nine, four, Two. So you'll see that two is the smallest one again. So we're going to be connecting these two. So you might be wondering how we get that minimum edge. We first create a min heap that has all the edges that are connecting the MST to outside vertices. And then we extract the min. So you'll see that the next smallest edge is going to be four. But four is useless to us because we, are, we do not want to make any more connections within the MST. We want to grow the MST by making connections to outside nodes. Six is useless for the same exact reason. So four and six are just not considered. The next smallest value is going to be the eight right here. So we're going to be connecting three and five, which will grow the MST. Now we have a couple edges to look at. We have all of these that connect the MST to six right here. We have these that connect the MST to seven. We have a connection to nine. We have a connection to 10 as well. So the min heap will extract the min, which is gonna be seven right here. And we're gonna connect these two. So as you connect more and more nodes, your min heap is gonna to increase too because you're adding more edges to it. So once you add seven, we have new connections to eight and nine. We also have connections from five to nine and 10. And we also have a connection to six. The smallest outside connection we have is four where we connect seven to eight. So we're gonna be doing that next. After that, we have an edge of weight one, which connects eight to nine, which is also an inside MSC to an outside connection. So we're gonna connect that. Then we have this three that connects the nine to the 10. So we'll add that. Finally, we have one node left and there are four separate connections to it from the MST to six. The smallest one is gonna be from five to six. So we're gonna be connecting that. And just like that, we've created our MST. If we remove all the other edges, we are left with the actual MST that Prim's algorithm makes. And it's identical to the one that we made with Crystal's algorithm. Just to show that it works with any arbitrary node, we're gonna be doing it again, a little bit faster with nine. So the MST is nine now, and we have four separate connections, the smallest one being one. So we're gonna connect eight and nine. Now we have a new connection to seven and 10, but the smallest edge is gonna be this three right here, which connects nine to 10. So we add them to the MST. This four is useless to us now because it connects eight and 10, which are already part of the MST. However, this four is good because it's the next smallest edge that connects the MST to an outside node. Now we have these edges to choose from. The smallest one is gonna be the seven right here. 
So we'll connect that just like that. Now we have new connections like before. The smallest one is gonna be the eight right here. So we're gonna connect five and six. Now all these connections are useless to us because they connect the MST to another value in the MST. This check is what prevents Prim's algorithm from making any cycles. Because if we connect any of these, we're gonna be left with a cycle. The next smallest weight we have is gonna be eight where we connect three and five. Now the next smallest two edges that we have are gonna be this and this where we connect three and four or we can connect three and one. It doesn't matter which one you choose. Our next smallest connection is gonna be this two which connects three and four. So either way, we hit both. Finally, we have one node left to connect and we have these edges to connect it. The smallest one is going to be three, so we'll connect it from four. And just like that, we've made another MSC, the same exact one. Since when we remove the edges, we're left with the exact same one we created with our last iteration and with Crystal's algorithm. The pseudocode and code implementation for both algorithms will be in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys found this helpful. Please consider subscribing or sharing with any friend you know is struggling with this. And comment down below if you have any suggestions for new videos. Alright, bye.